responsible. Ray Hamilton was arrested and sentenced to 342 years in jail. After a second trial for murder, he was sent to the electric chair. The police cars carried a massive armory of weapons. They prepared an ambush for the outlaws. This reconstruction of the ambush was made only a few days later. For three days and nights, these officers lay in wait on this road, but Bonnie and Clyde were wary. On the 23rd of May, the officers stopped Henry Methvin's father as he drove up the road. He was handcuffed to a tree and his truck left by the roadside as a decoy. On the third day, a tan-coloured Ford V8 turned into the road. It looked like the car, fellas. The police recognised Clyde as the driver. That's him for sure, I'll guarantee you. Get ready now. As Clyde saw Methvin's truck, he slowed down. The police prepared to open fire. That's him, fellas. He reaches for it, let him have it. Look down. The car stopped, riddled with bullets. This film, taken just a few minutes after the shooting, is not a reconstruction. Here is Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker, who died as they lived, by the gun. Bonnie is seen leaning against Clyde. Clyde was a master gunman. Seldom did anyone ever live when Clyde got the first shot. There were a pistol and a shotgun ready on the floor of their car. But the ambush had taken the couple by surprise. Within hours, sightseers were traveling to the ambush site. A procession of more than 50 cars escorted the shattered fort to the police pound. Here, it was put on show. A fence was set up to stop souvenir hunters. They'd already tried to rip parts off the car and seize bits of Bonnie and Clyde's hair and clothing. On the back seat, lawmen found three light machine guns, a dozen pistols and more than a thousand rounds of ammunition. Bonnie and Clyde had had no chance to return fire at the ambush, but both of them had guns close to hand. 107 rounds had been pumped into the car in less than two minutes. Their bodies had been riddled with about 50 bullets each. The bodies of Bonnie and Clyde were displayed to prove that they really were dead. Bonnie was visited by 40,000 people, Clyde by some 30,000. Frank Hamer and the men who'd hunted down the couple became national heroes. There was chaos at the Arcadia funeral home when people rushed to see the famous corpses. Clyde's coat was exhibited. It had 40 bullet holes from the ambush. His gun was also shown. Close examination showed that it had seven notches, one for each man he had murdered. Twenty relatives and friends stood trial for harboring the couple. The men were chained together, but the women weren't considered dangerous. W.D., already serving 15 years, got another two. Henry Methvin had a life sentence. He also received an extra two years. Bonnie's sister, Billy, and Buck's wife, Blanche, were sentenced to a year and a day each. Bonnie and Clyde's mothers were put on trial. Their lawyer pleaded that love took precedence over the law, but the judge wasn't impressed by the defence or by Mrs. Barrow's ill health. Both were given 30 days in prison. Clyde was buried next to his brother Buck at West Dallas Cemetery. An aeroplane dropped a floral wreath. Although she had asked to be buried next to Clyde, Bonnie was taken to Dallas's Fish Trap Cemetery. The press was out in force. As well as her extended family, thousands of sightseers attended the funeral. Her sister and mother were inconsolable. Clyde's family was also there. 
her family wrote an epitaph for Bonnie's grave. As the flowers are all made sweeter by the sunshine and the dew, so this old world is made brighter by the lives of folks like you. While on the run, Bonnie had sent poems to various newspapers. They included her own epitaph. They don't think they're too tough or desperate. They know that the law always wins. They've been shot at before, but they do not ignore that death is the wages of sin. Some day they'll go down together and they'll bury them side by side. To few it'll be grief, to the law a relief, but it's death for Bonnie and Clyde.